Hi guys, welcome to another lecture in the series Organic Chemistry 2 and today we're going to be talking about mass spectroscopy. So in a mass spectrometer, a sample which may be solid, liquid or gas is converted into gaseous ions which provide information about the structure of the original molecule. So information that might lead to the molecular formula of the original molecule. So the gaseous ions are usually positively charged and on the spectrum you will see a mass to charge ratio on the x axis and the ab relative abundances of the gaseous ions on the y axis. So this is what a simple mass spectrum looks like for carbon dioxide in particular. So on the X axis, we have our mass to charge ratio here and we have our relative abundance on the Y axis. So for carbon dioxide, if we go ahead and you know add up the molar mass of carbon dioxide, we should get 44 and that should correlate to our molecular ion here at 44 on our mass spectrum and then we can see various fragments and we refer to them as fragments when we're talking about um, uh, ma mass spectroscopy right and so you can envision a cleavage here and so you will see a peak and if you add up 12 and 16 hopefully you get 28 and that is represented as a very small peak here on the spectrum and you know the other end of that would be the oxygen and that would be at about 16 or exactly 16 on the spectrum so notice what we're seeing here is positively charged ions right on the spectrum and it gives us information about the original molecule which is carbon dioxide all right so mass spectrometry is a destructive analytical method compounds cannot be recovered after they have been converted to gaseous ions however thankfully only a very small quantity that's roughly one microgram of a pure sample is required to run a mass spectrum so while the mass spectrometers are very complex instruments so we're not going to go you know too much in detail into them but we need to as usual have a general understanding of how you know it works so they operate on the high vacuum and require trained operators so the se the sections and their functions are seen here so it has five components so we have sample introduction and vaporization as in that system the ionization and fragmentation you know the ion from the ion source you have acceleration you know it's ion separator focusing and analysis and that is correlated to the ion collector and ion detector all right so just to mention briefly the components of the mass spectrometer so first you inject the sample here and then two you have heater to vaporize the sample here and then three you have an electron source so you literally have electrons bombarding the sample so electron beams ionizes the sample so can you imagine that neutral molecule being bombarded with electrons and that happens at this part of the mass spectrometer and then four particles accelerated into the magnetic field that's happening here and and clearly you know the that must be related to the size or correlated to the size of the molecules and or ions and then you have the magnet here and then you have the charged particle beam 
here. So the charged particles are deflected and essentially they are the magnetic field number five separates particles based on the mass charge ratio which is what i was about to say so from highest so, sorry from lightest to heaviest and that is how the separation happens and that is why on our spectrum we will see you know our molecular ion you know in comparison to the uh the smaller fragments at the other end as we saw with carbon dioxide so we saw you know the mass the greater mass being here the lower mass being here and that is because the magnetic field separates the particles based on the mass charge ratio here all right so this is essentially what happens you have a neutral molecule the electrons that we saw you know from our electron source electron beam ionizes the sample so essentially we get our molecular ion so this entity is known as a molecular ion or the parent ion it is a molecule minus an electron right so it that is why it's an ion so this um molecular ion species because it lacks an electron in the molecular framework is very unstable and so this molecular ion undergoes fragmentation to yield neutral molecules and a number of daughter ions also called fragment ions the mass to charge ratio of the daughter ions can provide information about the structure of the molecular ion so as we saw with carbon dioxide which was our molecular ion we saw our daughter ions that was the oxygen and the co as daughter ions and you know and you also had neutral molecules as well all right so the molecular or the parent ion and the fragment ions are focused by a combination of magnetic and electrical fields right as we saw when we looked at the instrument so the mass to charge ratio is equal to or or proportional to the magnetic field strength and also inverse proportional to the electrical field strength here and r is the radius of the curvature of the path so b and v are varied so that r is constant and ions of only one mass per charge ratio strike the collector at a given time all right so this is an example of the spectrum of hexane right so here we have hexane and if we remember well this is the structure of hexane here so we have six carbons and you know a number of hydrogens and so we have our m plus peak being here at 86 so if we get if we calculate the molar mass for hexane we should get 86 we have a m plus one peak seen here we haven't spoken about that but just note here that we have a m plus one peak here at 87 we have a base peak here which is the most intense peak which with has an intensity of 100 and that is at 57 the mz the mass charge ratio is 57 for the base peak right and then clearly you have other um daughter ions or fragment ions so here we have you know if we fragment of the methyl we're left with um this uh fragment ion or daughter ion if we take off a methyl we're left with this fragment ion if we take if we break the molecule in two or if the 
instrument breaks the molecule in two then you're left with this dot ion and if you break it um here then you're left with this dot ion and all of these are represented on the spectrum right so um all of these you know 70 71 there's a peak at 71 there's a peak at 57 which is the most intense peak at 57 here there's a peak at 43 and there's a peak at 29 here and of course there are others right but those are the major delta ions or fragments so we have a question here look at the spectrum of two methyl hexane and answer this question what is the master charge value of the m plus peak and of the base peak give possible structures of the fragments giving rise to the large peak at mz 85 57 and 43 right so here is the spectrum so firstly you know what you want to do is to draw the structure so have an idea of the possible data or fragment ions and take it from there right so try to attempt the question pause the video here before you you move on to the answer all right so what did the question say what is the mass charge ratio of the base peak and the m plus peak so here we have our m plus so first you would have drawn the structure right and it has a molecular formula of c7h16 so if you add it up you should expect a, a molecular ion peak at 100 uh, mass charge ratio here so this is our um base peak at 100 sorry not our base peak our molecular ion peak at 100 or m plus in other words and then our base peak here which is our most intense peak is at 43 all right so that is that part of the structure then it says give possible structures of the 87 57 and 43 fragments so essentially you know you can have various answers for this right because clearly it can fragment at different areas so you know i've shown the 43 the 85 which and this 43 means if you add up all of these you would get 43 in terms of the mass if you add up all of these you should get 57 and if you add up everything on this side minus the methyl you should get 85 and they are responsible for the fragments here but as i said guys you can find other fragments that add up to 43 85 and 57 if you can that's also fine the question i didn't say the most likely fragments it says give possible structures of the fragments right so all you'd have to do is to just draw the for example ch3 ch2 ch2 and then a little squiggly line here to show that it's a fragment so that's how you would answer a question like that all right so calibration is very important in mass spectrometry ions cannot be weighed and so the assignment of a particular uh, master charge on a to a particular ion is entirely a function of calibration so you have to have hydrocarbon standards which produce ions of established master charge which are used to calibrate mass spectrometers Another important factor in mass spectrometry is resolution. So R is resolution, and that is equal to M divided by delta M. And M is the mass of the particle, and delta M is the difference in mass between a particle of mass M and the particle of next higher mass which can be resolved by the instrument so clearly the smaller this value is the larger n is and therefore the larger uh, the resolution of the instrument 
So in low res mass spectrometers, R is equal to 2000. In high res uh, mass spectrometers, R is equal to 20,000. So a higher resolution mass spectrometer is desirable which means therefore there is a, a greater difference in mass or you know it's very sensitive you know as as compared to a lower resolution mass spectrometer so the most important application of high res mass spectrometers is the determination of very precise molecular weights of substances so we are accustomed to thinking of atoms as having integral masses. So, you know, every time we're adding up a molar mass, for example, or relative molecular mass, we use one for hydrogen, 12 for carbon, um, 16 for oxygen, and 12 for nitrogen. However, if the masses are determined with sufficient precision, we find that this is not completely true meaning you know we can add other decimal places so when you're using a high-res mass spec um the values are not exactly equal to you know as we would quote it so it was in 1923 that aston discovered that every isotopic mass is characterized by a small mass defect and so the mass of each atom actually differs from whole mass number by an amount known as the nuclear packing fraction and as a result of that the actual if you use a high-res mass spec these are the values that you will get for the masses and not exactly one not exactly 15, 16 sorry not exact well exactly 12 and not exactly um 14. So when precise der determinations are made, ions or molecular ions or fragments of the same nominal mass will have slightly different measured masses depending on the atoms constituting the ion. Thus, a molecular ion of mass to charge ratio of 60 could be you know you could differentiate between them because if we use our regular um 12 1 16 we would get the same 60 right but if we use a mass spec we are able to distinguish between these two molecular ions right and here is the same you know all four are 60 but they are very they're different based on you know based on the fact that we can use a high res mass spec to differentiate between all four molecular ions so possible molecular formulae structures and accurate masses for a molecular ion of nominal value 60 are seen here so once you have a proposed molecular uh, formula you know these, these these are possibilities in terms of the structure so very different even though all of them if you would add them up normally you would get 60 but if we use a high res mass spec we can differentiate between them and clearly they have very different structures so the observation of a molecular ion of mass 60.058 would establish that the unknown molecule is C3H8O, an instrument with a resolution of roughly uh, 5,320 could readily distinguish, distinguish between these masses. And so a precisely determined molecular weight can therefore provide the molecular formula of a substance under study. And Clearly, that's the whole one of the most important reasons why we would do um, mass, why we do mass spec. So, to take a second to now to look at the elemental compositions in unit mass measurements. 
So even with instrumentation of unit mass resolution, the presence of isotopes of no natural abundance gives rise to a useful and simple method of deducing the elemental composition of many ions. So a chemically pure organic compound will give a mixture of mass spectra because the elements of which it is composed are not isotopically pure. So we know that, for example, for carbon atom, it has a 1.1% probability of being carbon 30, right? And we know this information. So let's consider the mass spectrum of benzene, which is C6H6, and it has a relative atomic mass or a relative molecular mass of 78. So benzene is a very stable compound and the molecular ion or the M plus ion is also very stable and will be the base peak, that is the peak of 100% relative abundance. So since there are six atoms in benzene, sorry, six carbon atoms in benzene, each with a 1.1% probability of being carbon 13, the relative abundance of the M plus one peak is six times 1.1% as high as the M plus peak. And so in benzene, the relative abundance of this M plus one peak will be 6.6%. So this is often a fair predictor of the number of carbon atoms in a molecule or a fragment. So take for example that the relative, so we're using benzene as an example here, to so take the relative abundance of the M plus one peak, which is 6.6 .6 or 6.7, and I have the values color coded here. So the relative abundance is M plus one. If we take it as a percentage of the relative abundance of M, which is the molecule, and divide that by 1.1, we can get a prediction of the number of carbons. So here, you know, the relative abundance is of the M plus one peak is 6.7. Take it as a percentage of the relative abundance of the molecular ion, which we were just told here, that is 100% for benzene. And when you get that value, you divide it by 1.1, which is a re the relative abundance of the, um, of the carbon-13 isotope, and you get 6 so you can use these values to predict the number of carbon atoms in a molecule or a fragment so we can use that to calculate that the carbon sorry benzene has six carbons so this is the mass spectrum of benzene where we have our base peak here being 78 right so this is the mass charge ratio these are the relative abundances so clearly our base peak is our molecular ion peak seen here and then of course we have other fragments all right so in the mass spectrum of hexane we have uh the m peak the m plus peak is about 30 percent so unlike benzene, which is 100% for the molecular ion peak, the, for, for hexane, it is 30%. So this is our molecular ion, which has a relative abundance of 30%. So therefore, we would expect the M plus 1 peak to be 6.7% of 30% or of 30 and that would work out to be around two. So based on the fact that hexane has six carbons, right? So it'd be six times 1.1, it should be, you know, 6.6 .6 or 6.7. We take that value as a percentage of the uh, relative abundance of the molecular ion, which is 30, and we get two. 
So, so that is what we would expect the relative abundance of the M plus one peak to be, which is here, because this is 20. This is, um, well, the, the relative abundance of the molecular ion is 30 and the relative abundance of the M plus ion here is M plus one ion is two here. So we can actually calculate it, or if we have one, we can go to and fro, basic to and fro in, in these calculations. So what I'd advise you to do is to just take a second, perhaps go back and just write out, you know, what was said here and ensure that you go through this, go through this so that you can understand it for yourself. All right, so let's see if we can apply this. So an unknown hydrocarbon shows a molecular ion peak at MZ is equal to 170 with a relative intensity of 100. The M plus one peak has an intensity of 13.2. What is the molecular formula of the unknown? So having gone back, having looked at the two examples, the one with benzene and the one with hexane, see if you can apply that to this question here. So pause, try it, and then listen for the answer. All right, so our unknown here is X, right? So we have, we normally take um, the relative abundance is a percentage of the molecular ion. So we're told here that the relative abundance of the molecular ion is um, 100. So we're told that so we can plug in these values and we know that it's 13.2. Um, That's given. So X, therefore, would be equal to 13.2. If we divide that by 1.1, we get 12. So we know for a fact that this hydrocarbon, and we're told that it's a hydrocarbon, which means that it only has carbon and hydrogen, right? And so the mass of the compound is 170 based on the mass charge ratio. And if we know that we have 12 carbons, and we know that you know the molecular weight of carbon is 12 we just multiply we get 144 and we solve for x and we get 26 so in this case we can say that uh, the molecular formula will be c12h26 all right so there are also elements with heavy isotopes of high abundance because with carbon clearly carbon carbon 13 is of low abundance only 1.1 percent but let's look at you know sulfur and its isotopes the relative abundances being 95 and 4.2 for chlorine, 75.5 and 24.5. Bromine, significantly, 50.5 and 49.5. So that is bromine, 79, and bromine, 81. For silicon, uh, we can see various relative abundances of key isotopes, of heavy isotopes. So these give very distinctive mass spectral patterns and compounds containing bromine, for example, can easily be recognized. So here we have an example of, you know, bromomethane and the relative, if we add it up, you know, we should get 94 if we're using the uh, bromine 79 isotope. If we're using the bromine 81 isotope, we'll get 96, right? And clearly we have an M plus for, for the 94 and we have an M plus one for the 96 as well, right? Because we have one carbon atom here. So, um, yeah, just to show that it's not just carbon, we have other elements 
uh, that have isotopes of high abundance. All right, so let's finish off with this question here, which you should try to answer. A liquid compound gave a mass spectrum in which the molecular ion appears as a pair of equal intensity peaks at um, 122 and 124 mass charge ratio. Small fragment ion peaks are seen at the mass charge ratio 107 and 109 of equal intensity and at 79, 80, 81 and 80 all roughly the same size. Large fragment ions are seen at MZ43. Uh, so 43 is a base peak and you have other ions at 41 and 39 and having said all of that the question is suggest a name for this compound and i have two hints so the first hint is what element is indicated by equal intensity ions differing by two atomic mass units and the other hint is what mass remains if the isotopic mass of this element is subtracted from the molecular ion mass so have a go at this question and if you have reached at this point and if you have watched all of these videos, um, thank you so much for watching and see you next time.